In this session, we are going to introduce you to R. The agenda that we are going to follow for today's session is as per this slide. We are first going to spend some time on the history as well as the evolution of R. Where did R evolve from? We are then going to spend some time understanding the principle as well as the software paradigm of R. We are going to describe the interface of R we are going to learn about the advantages as well as the drawbacks of using R. We will learn when and why to use R. And finally, we will cover some useful references for learning R. So we'll start with the first point on the agenda, the history and evolution of R. The origin of R can be traced back to the 1970s to the Bell Labs. In the middle of 1970s, an American team of the Bell Labs, which was one of the most prestigious research organizations at the time, the team was not satisfied with the software that was available to them at the time. And they decided to develop a software which they called S in order to meet their needs. S was originally implemented as Fortran libraries Fortran is an old, almost redundant computing language and the first version of S was implemented on Fortran. This was sometime in the 70s. By the end of the 1980s, the S system was translated into C and started following a structure, an architecture, which is relatively similar to today's R software. So while the initial version was implemented on Fortran, by the end of the 1980s, it was translated into C, which had come out as a much more powerful and faster language and was the most popular language at that time. R has essentially developed from the S language. The S language underwent several version changes from version 1 to version 2 to 3 and then finally to version 4. The fourth version of S was made available in 1998 and this is very close to the version which is still in use today and that's because the S language was purchased and its design frozen by a company called Insightful which intended to make a commercial version of S called S+. S plus stands for S plus the GUI. So essentially when S was developed by the time version 4 was developed it had evolved into a fairly powerful language and a company called Insightful bought this language. They decided to freeze the language as it was and created GUI for the language in order to make it more accessible to the users and this they intended to market as a commercial version. So R has essentially developed from version 4 of S and it comes from the needs of applied researchers with sophisticated mathematical needs to come up with an advanced technology solution for the high-tech industry. We can find the influence of S version 4 in R which is again a programming language well suited both for research as well as industrial application. Based on the S language, R has concurrently been developed from the beginning of the 1990s. It was essentially at the start of the 90s that uh, the development of R started and initially it was kept confidential but then this was made public in 1993. The acceleration of R development has been helped by a couple of things. The first is the creation of the R help and the R development mailing lists and also the creation of the R core group. This is the group that is in charge of controlling the source code for R. So you can see from the graph here that in the 1990 there were two to three members in the R core group and this has grown to almost 20 now. So there are 20 people who are dedicated to managing the source code and all the changes that happen within R and there is an extensive R help system which is very useful for new users to get the hang of the tool. 
so similar to the help function that is there in SAS is there in most uh, Microsoft uh, applications as well R has also developed a R help system which is very useful for uh, new users and uh, just like SAS has uh, SAS user groups and support groups and uh, Microsoft also has uh, user communities which talk about uh, the software and answer questions on any issues related to these tools. Uh, similar to that, the R development mailing lists have been formed which are very useful sources of information for uh, R users. So these two developments have uh, helped in the acceleration of the growth of R and this can be tracked from the number of packages that are there in R. As we will see later, a package in R is a collection of functions that enable the user to make computations on a particular issue, usually in statistics. For example, descriptive statistics, data manipulation, regression analysis, advanced visualization, etc. The development of R can be tracked by the growing number of R packages as well. As we'll see later, a package in R is essentially a collection of functions that enable the user to make computations on a particular issue, usually uh, related to statistics. Similar to procedures in SAS, which allow users to do a set of mathematical or statistical functions on uh, any kind of data, R also has a number of packages which can help users perform a number of mathematical functions. So the development of R can be traced to the number of packages that are available in R. The number of packages that were available in R in 2001 was around uh, 100 packages and this number has grown to over 2000 in 2009. Some people now estimate that there are uh, more than 3000 R packages. This number is of course difficult to estimate since anyone can produce a package in R. But uh, essentially there are uh, thousands of useful R packages that are available to perform a variety of tasks in R. So that is uh, another important fact that the capabilities of R have been greatly enhanced over the years by the development of these packages and there is a core group of about 20 people that essentially controls the source code of R and any changes that are made to R. And this is uh, helping the growth of R as well as the proper maintenance of the software. In terms of version, R uh, version 1.0.1 was released in 2000 and today we are on version 2.14. Although R has been available for decades, the popularity of this tool has soared mostly in the last 10 years. And uh, we've seen that in the figures or on the previous slide as well, and we'll see that in the slides that uh, come later on. This uh, recent popularity is due not only to logical factors related to the capabilities of the language, but also to a certain less understandable reasons. This recent increase in popularity is due not only to logical factors related to the capabilities of the language, but also to less understandable reasons. So many qualities explain R's success and we will describe them later in more detail. The fact that the language is object oriented, thus avoiding painful loops and other logical structures in the code. The language is simple. There is almost no declaration of variables easily interfaces with other languages and also the number of uh, R users that is growing. So all of these factors are indeed contributing to the popularity of R. And uh, of course, one big reason why R is becoming so popular is that it is open source and uh, hence it's free, which is an important consideration when it comes to uh, a lot of small and medium sized businesses. A uh, lot of the large businesses, of course, uh, don't mind the costs of a paid tool. And uh, of course, there are a lot of other open source tools which are available, but uh, they are not as popular as R because they are not as effective and as uh, versatile as R. There is also a less understandable reason that is contributing to the growth of R. And this is because R is perceived as a cool tool. 
R is a language that has essentially been developed by hardcore practitioners and uh, people who had very sophisticated mathematical needs. Uh, people from the field of data mining, people from the field of genetics, people from the field of clinical research. And because R has come out from such an elite group of professionals, people who use R perceive themselves to be cool people, people who are using uh, one of the most sophisticated tools uh, that has been developed. So now we have a series of uh, graphs that show us uh, how R has been becoming more and more popular over the years. The first graph is a comparison of mailing lists. So the number of mailing lists that are there uh, on the web for some of the most popular analytical tools. And you can see that R has, uh, the number of mailing lists for R has soared in the recent years and now it's uh, the highest of all softwares. This is a KD Nugget survey that was conducted in 2012, which asked people what programming languages they used for data mining or data analysis in the last 12 months. And again, R came out on top with 45% of the users saying that they have used the R tool in the past 12 months. This was followed by SQL, Python, Java, and then SAS. Another uh, factor that we can use to gauge the popularity of R is the number of blogs that are written about the software. And you can see that again R with 365 blogs is far ahead of uh, SAS which is number 2 at uh, 40. The last two graphs that you've seen have been taken from the site KD Nuggets which is a popular site for data miners. If you are interested in a career in analytics then I would seriously advise you to visit this site. This site is an interesting source of in all kinds of information on analytics. There are uh, many polls that are conducted regularly which uh, track the usage of various analytical tools, techniques, which track the salaries across regions. So there's a lot of interesting information that is available on this site. So R has consistently been becoming popular in all the various fields and uh, we've seen a number of uh, different measures that uh, point to that. However, despite the growing use of R in the field of business analytics, it is still not perceived as a leading tool by employers who prefer expensive tools like SaaS. And it's only in the last five years or so that demand for R in business has also started increasing. Large number of uh, Indian organizations as well as global organizations are switching to R. Google is one of the companies that has started using R. A lot of the Indian companies that we talk for their uh, training needs as well as their hiring needs have now started looking for people who can work on R. So increasingly this skill is becoming more and more uh, in demand in India as well as across the globe. Currently R is the second most popular tool in business analytics uh, behind SaaS. And as you might know, Jigsaw Academy offers online courses on SaaS as well. So that's another tool that uh, one should look at if one is looking to make a career in business analytics.